So Alien Romulus, it's good. Now it's still not as good as the original Alien by Ridley Scott or even Aliens by James Cameron, but in the growing pantheon of various alien films and things related to Alien, whether Alien vs. Predator or Prometheus or any of that stuff, it's probably at the top of that list. To be fair, that's not saying that much because most of the other films are not very good, so it's not a super high bar to clear, but this one is probably at the top of that list. That being said, it's not a perfect film. However, if you just want to know if you should go see it if you're a fan of those movies, you can stop watching here and go see it. It is good. I'd give it a three stars out of five, maybe three and a half. Yeah, three and a half, yeah. It does a lot of things right, only a couple things wrong. But importantly, you can tell the director is a fan of the good Alien films and even some of the bad ones. There's a lot of love there. And Fede Alvarez, he's a good director. He did Don't Breathe, that one was an awesome one. He also did one of the better non-Sam Raimi Evil Dead films. Not the most recent one, which I like that one too. There are incredible performances in this, including from David Johnson, who I think is a kind of a relative newcomer and plays Andy in the film. He's really great. I mentioned this in my Aliens review, but in the trailer and in the film, there are nods to exact camera moves and moments in the previous great films. The world building and the vibes, the aesthetic, everything nails the sort of look and feel you'd hope to see from an alien film as well. The aesthetic of the first film is just basically space trucking. Dirty, messed up old ship equipment, 1970s hardware with a retro future aesthetic. And thankfully this film, kind of like how Blade Runner 2049 does, continues that aesthetic, knowing that it's sort of key to the look and feel of things. No flat touch screens that are all dust free here. And the things this film does right, things like the body horror stuff, the audio design, nods to the original films, it's excellent. But a couple of things keep this from being anything above a three and a half in my book, and I wanna explain what those are. With that, we have to get into spoilers now though, so if you were holding off leaving the video now and hadn't seen it yet, now's the time to go check the movie out and come back and see what your thoughts are. If you agree with me, disagree, please share in the comments. Totally fine if you disagree. Lots of people disagree apparently with several of my other reviews. <coughs> Deadpool Wolverine, twisters. <coughs> anyway, the things it doesn't do so great. I really, really wish we'd stop dragging dead actors into films. That's right, this film takes Sir Ian Holm, Bilbo himself, and using some sort of weird uncanny valley version of CGI of the character looking like his 1970s self, and probably some sort of AI tuned performance of the voice capture, we get this weird version of him being the antagonist kind of again. And I mean, with Andy, we clearly saw that you don't have to have one of these old actors, you know, brought back to life to play the character again. Just get someone else or have it be a different model. We've already seen the Bishop style model android, the Michael Fassbender, and now the very talented David Johnson. If you really want to reach even Winona Ryder, I guess. You just have it be a different actor. And it was just kind of weird and distracting for a good part of the movie. There were certain parts where it wasn't as bad, like where it was on a computer screen, it was low resolution or a fixed angle, but any of the in-person or in-android moments we're really off-putting. Speaking of off-putting, the other homage this movie seems to clearly pay is to Alien Resurrection, the 90s, very 90s film, where there's an alien-human hybrid. And just like that movie, it doesn't work very well for this. Sure, it's creepy. Yes, it's playing more into the motherhood body horror thing, I guess, kind of. But again, having that misses the point of what Alien is. The aliens are space wasps. Go watch a nature documentary about wasps. They're little flying devils. They do the same thing that the aliens do. They go find little caterpillars and lay their eggs inside of the caterpillar and the babies eat their way out. They have a queen, they have a nest, it's gross. They put up stuff all over the place. Aliens are space wasps. Making there be a person space wasp is not any scarier. It's just weird and kind of gross and not in a cool, interesting way. The alien queen is still cooler. The whole compound whatever thing subplot thing was dumb too. So much of the film is done right. But the one thing that I think keeps it from being really good is the lack of the sort of subtext that made Alien and Aliens so good. What I mean by that is Alien, the first one, is clearly about, well, a certain word that if I say it's probably going to get this video shadow banned, but there's plenty of people who've written on this topic. The phallic nature of the alien's head, the way the face hugger implants itself, its two sack-like things on the side of its body, clear allusions to pregnancy, unwanted, and all that. That's what the first movie's about. And Aliens is kind of tangential to that in that it's related about motherhood. Sigourney Weaver's character Ripley is frozen for many years. When she's woken back up, she's told that her daughter is gone. It's been decades, and so everybody she's ever cared about is dead, basically. And so when she meets Newt, she immediately stands in as sort of a surrogate for her, acting as a mom. The alien queen is a mom, too. The whole thing is about moms clashing together. There's literally a point where they stand off, and Sigourney is sort of on even footing with the power loader against her. It's mom to mom. 
Alien Queen's mad that Sigourney burned all of her babies. Sigourney's mad that the alien's gonna try and do the same to Newt. Hence the famous get away from her, you bitch. But what is the subtext for Alien Romulus? I don't know if there is one. It starts out actually with a really great sort of thing about maybe you know super dystopian capitalist future thing where these young people who are trying to work off debt, it's kind of standing for something like student loan debt, I guess, maybe. The company basically just screws them over and over again. There's really a canary in a coal mine sort of situation. But then that sort of disappears. And we get to just being monster stuff here. That's the thing that actually makes Alien and Aliens so good. That subtext, the symbolism. Yes, they're an awesome space horror film with monsters, you know. But that's still not the point. The point is to tell this other sort of deeper story and symbolism. It's layers, it's context, secondary meanings dialogue with innuendo of different types. That's the secret sauce. In any case, the movie is great. It's one you should definitely see, especially if you're a fan of the Alien films, but just know it's still not hitting that high bar that's been set so long ago by Alien and Aliens. Overall though, good film. Not great, but good. Check it out. Three and a half stars.